Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me on another Lift in the Curtain. Today, I'm joined by Emma Kingston, who plays Julie Jordan, and Matt Blaker, who plays Billy Bigelow, in Kill for House Theatre's production of Carousel. The production is now open, and it's phenomenal, and it plays until Sunday, the 3rd of July. So grab your tickets, and I hope you enjoy it. It's a fantastic conversation. Emma Kingston and I play Julie Jordan in Carousel. Um, Julie is part of the female story, one of the female storylines that we follow and she's essentially just a working girl who falls in love with the audience can decide whether it's the right or the wrong kind of man and just essentially follows the development of her life in much a way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, um, hi, I'm, I'm Matt Blaker. I, I play Billy Bigelow in Carousel. Um, Billy is, uh, he's come back from the war um, and he's been in the Navy. He's broken and bitter and tired. Um, he falls in love with Julie, um, who is sort of everything that he is not. Um, and the story sort of charts his, his his demise, really. I guess he yeah. he sort of falls into uh, the wrong crowd, and he he um, he sort of begins the story, you know, as this kind of whole person, but very sort of broken on the inside. And as as the story goes on, he sort of his his outside his inside becomes his outside and he sort of breaks down and in a ways really and it's sort of about his like search for redemption search for redemption end. yeah but you know and it's absolutely up to everybody watching to decide whether he, whether he gets it i guess mm. i know i think emma i saw you put it was your dream role but what kind of attracted you both to the parts um to be honest, my journey with Carousel probably started when I was very, very little. Um, my dad used to be a part of an Amdram company. And one of the first shows I went to see when I was literally about two years old was Carousel. So I think it was always a film that I watched, always a soundtrack that I listened to. Um, and I, I can't remember a time where Carousel sort of wasn't a part of my life. Um, so to be able to get to do that feels just very full circle for me. That's, I've got no answer to that. <laughs> really? That's so annoying. Um, I, uh, I really wanted to work with, with Nick, who directed the piece, um, and, and with Francis, um, who the director. I actually I auditioned for Francis 10 years ago. He ran, ran my drama school um, third year auditions. Oh my god! Yeah, for 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 like my third year show at drama school, um, and I, basically I've waited ten years for to work with them, um, to work with him specifically. And, and when the sort of opportunity came up to audition for the sh show, um, I saw the names attached to it, and I was like, oh, I, you know, I'd absolutely love to be a part of that. I didn't. I'd seen the Regent's Park production and thought, oh, I'd love to have a crack at that. But I didn't. To be honest, I'm quite young for a Billy, really. Quite a young Billy, so I don't know if that's true. But I think you know, in the grand scheme of things, of people that have played it in the past, I'm quite young, so I didn't really think that it was going to be an option for a number of years. But this came up, and um, on the whole, the cast are quite young, I think. So it's it's quite like nice to have a go at it, have a go at it at this age. But yeah, it was it was you know really for me initially, it was the opportunity to work with the team, um, and now it's like amazing to have the chance to sort of sort of do the show and I, I've, I've sort of fallen in love with it as it's gone on. Yeah. Like I've never, I didn't watch the film. Okay. Um, and I've only ever seen the production at Regent's Park, which is very different. Um, I think the film very much, you know, it, it adds a Hollywood spring sprinkler yeah. onto um, a lot of the issues that I think we've tried to overtly highlight, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Um, there are moments in the film where everyone sort of, gives each other a cuddle and says like, it's going to be okay. And actually life, life isn't always okay. Mm. Um, and I think to highlight that is something that I certainly haven't really seen in any productions of Carousel. Cause I saw it at the Savoy in 2008 with 
Alan Vickery, who plays our star keeper, mm. he was playing Mr. Snow in that production, Al Silber, um, and my wonderful friend Lauren Hood, who played Carrie. Um, and I saw that production, but I have seen it twice when my dad did it at Harrowlight Opera Company, <laughs> <laughs> Amdram Society. Um, I, love, I love the film because I think Gordon McRae and Shirley Jones are just mm. perfect because then they also did the film of Oklahoma together. Oh. Yeah. I've not seen any of these films. No, I need to, <laughs> you need to we'll have a movie now. You do. Though I, don't, I like how the stage show, obviously the film kind of has him dead at the start, doesn't it? And kind of then does it that way. I prefer kind of how obviously it's on stage where you don't see it till mm. it happens, I suppose. But that works better. How are you guys finding it, obviously, working at Kilworth with the elements, as it were? Oh, it's great. Actually, you know what? Like, it's um i've never done anything outside mm. and it's it's been so it's actually really it's great Our sound oh using. my god they are incredible and they've like they really looked after us in the sense that it's 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 not difficult to sing in that space and sometimes singing outside is really hard um but actually they what the sound design team have done is amazing um mm. and i've never i've, I've never i've never been to kill i didn't i no, didn't really I know what it was like and it's it's been great it's uh it's such a great space um, yeah. and you know it's what's lovely is like as the piece goes on and like it gets darker it genuinely gets darker outside yeah. so by the time we're into act two and um, i am finding though that the like halfway through act two seems to be getting lighter at the does, moment until we get to summer solstice it's gonna be very much a daylight show which is gonna be bizarre but then sort of with our last two weeks of the run i think it'll get darker and darker um but yeah i think the elements are interesting we're very very lucky that we haven't had a huge amount of wet weather True. um you know we're in our third week and the most colossal downpour happened on our dress rehearsal um but other than that says we've been fairly lucky thus far um long may it stay hopefully <laughs> um you know sometimes the chilly weather at the end of may when we started the shows that i found tough but i struggle with the cold it could be 30 degrees and i'll be hmm. there in a hoodie so I, I was getting into so very prepared with my hot water bottle um <laughs> To be honest, I, I'm not really off stage very much, so I, I managed to keep you warm. I haven't really noticed But you're also it. wearing a massive jacket. I have got a big yeah. jacket on. It's true. Yeah, huh? my flimsy dresses and shirts don't do much for the insulation. Yeah, I know you kind of mentioned the sound team, but you do have to, like, then prepare your bodies differently to, say, doing a show indoors. For me, I think it's the cold that changes the way that my body feels. I actually quite enjoy the fact it's quite humid here because I haven't particularly found it, like you said, difficult to sing in the space. And I also think that does come from some of the moisture in the air because we're like amongst trees and things like that. Um, it doesn't feel drying. And sometimes that can be a problem with air conditioning and, mm. you know, indoor theater and things like that, where you're trying to balance temperatures outside versus air conditioning inside, especially at this time of the year. Um, so for me, it's more about really warming through my muscles through the show, whether that genuinely be with a hot water bottle or keeping a coat on, um, just so that your whole body like tense up, but vocally, you know, all right. Yeah. Luckily I, I do the, the blow high, blow low number right before the soliloquy so oh yeah so you're nice and warm i've got no excuse about being warm really no and how are you both because i asked them um, i spoke to um laura and oh i can't remember his name enoch i've forgotten his name always good on oh, saturday of the show but how are you both finding the slope because as an audience member that slope on the stage left is looking very steep so i don't know obviously i know it's got a roof but imagine in a wet show that's a carnage. Well, I've, I've, I've named it Julie's Jogger. <laughs> um, it's pretty much all my entrances are down that ramp. Um, 
it's scarier to look at than go down. And actually, mm. I think because of the way it's been designed, it's the way part of the set. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, it's the most gritted and slip free part of the set. No, you did look like a penguin initially, but I now, did. And now you've nailed it. Um, I've, I think I've just learned, and I know this is going to sound really silly. We're walking down a ramp. So why am I trying to pretend like it's a flat surface? Mm. Like I wouldn't, I think it was just going from the rehearsal room where you're on like flat surfaces to feeling like you want that same kind of energy, but then you can shift the energy into a different place. So I was like, I don't need to run down this ramp when I, you know, look for you at the end, Mm. I can just walk down the ramp as if it's coming out of my house. And then when I get on a flat surface, then I can run. (laughs) Um, rather than trying to penguin trot down yeah. the ramp. Yeah, I've only fallen over once on the stage so far. So, that, that, fingers crossed, that will uh, be the only one. I mean, I haven't fallen down the ramp. I fell on a flat surface. Yeah. Um, so, hey Fingers crossed. But then, kind of, obviously, as you kind of said, the role of Billy, specifically, is kind of a darker character. How do you kind of prepare yourself, Matt, for kind of getting into that kind of space, headspace, I suppose. I think the best thing about the show is that it kind of does all the work for you. Mm. Like you don't actually need to do anything extra because the sh- writing is so good that it, it, it does it all for you. And he, you go on that journey through the text. So actually at the beginning of the show, yes, he's, he's been to war and it's been tough and he's, you know, suffering. Um, but actually... You know, through each scene, and this is where Nick's work has been so good. You know, he's sort of he's so good about trusting the text and taking each scene as it is, and not playing the end before the beginning. That actually, you go on the you go on the journey every night, and you know, you don't you don't need work too hard in terms of looking for extra things or or finding extra things because because the, the t- it's all written, it's all there for you. So as long as you're following and um, going on that journey at, at every night, by the time you get to the end, you you, you, you've been on it and you know the, the discover the self-discovery for example the you know in the soliloquy it's this big shift in Billy's character you know, from uh, not from not really caring about anything suddenly having this focus that is so focused on on Louise that actually it's it's all there so as long as you know what, what's written I think you're, you're on the right track hopefully <laughs> yes and you kind of have to like obviously like since like the Me Too movement and all that, do you have to kind of approach it differently, kind of like the abuse kind of obviously that he gives to Julie kind of? Yeah, I think we, we as a company um, took the approach with Nick and with Francis and, you know, with everybody to, to not shy away from it um, and to address it for what it is. Uh, to a, from a sort of 2022 attitude in the sense that it has, happen but how do we look at it from um louise's point of view and how does she view her mother when that happens and how yeah. do, you don't ever see billy hit julie yeah but you do see billy hit louise in our production in this production. so uh it's you know we don't we don't shy away from that and it's how louise then judges her mother and views her mother and how um julie's approach to it what um is so is sort of so key. Um, I was quite passionate about very much not shying away from the abuse because I think sometimes with productions of Carousel or the way people talk about Carousel and being scared of the material is because they're like, oh, it's dated, and I'm like, oh, yeah, because you know no one suffers from domestic abuse these mm. days. You know, just look at the figures post pandemic of domestic violence and abuse in you know they went up by four hundred percent. And I think to pretend like it doesn't happen, especially because you don't actually see on stage any form of abuse between Billy and Julie physically, um, that doesn't mean it's not there. And I think for, you know, men and women, whoever is victim of domestic abuse, if everyone knew that their relationships were completely toxic, no one would stay in them. Um, Mm. And I think for me, it was very much important to address that idea of 
the love that's there so that the audience can also appreciate why Julie fell in love, but also wish that she wouldn't stay in something that's very toxic. Um, and I think our idea with Louise at the end is that, you know, there's a very problematic line that people find and it's, you know, Louise says that, you know, it didn't hurt when he hit me kind of with a kiss. And um, Julie backs that up and says, yes, you can be hurt and it, and it not hurt at all. And our idea is that Louise completely dismisses that and sort of says, that's You're wrong. not okay. Mm. Um, and I think that, you know, you look at how generationally things have changed as well to, you know, very much, even when we were kids, all smack their kids all the time. And it wasn't, it wasn't in a, it wasn't in a violent nature. It was a way of people just go, that was, yeah. you know, my dad got caned at school. Um, and that was just, you know, how things were done, whether that's good or bad, you can't rewrite history. And I think to cover up would be a disservice to the material. And quite honestly, and I feel really passionately about this, like a disservice to those who do suffer from domestic violence. Um, because not everyone has enough support behind them to leave those kind of situations. Also, you know, in our situation when Billy dies, she so badly wants people to remember him for the good and not the bad. Mm. You know, she it's tells a nice whole load of fairy and, stories. Try and find those moments of good, you know, at the beginning, like the moments where they interact and it's like, it's key to show that they are like, you know, they were in love and they did love each other and there was a reason they loved each other. And it's the it's taking the light, you know, the, the, the light with the dark. Yeah. Um, and then when dark moments happen, you know, I, I find a lot of the time with sort of the nature of abusive relationships that something dark can happen followed by a grand gesture of love. And I think a lot of the time you fall in love with those grand gestures of love and you it's like your body completely tells you to forget all of the bad so you know in the moment where she tells Billy that she's pregnant before that he is not being a particularly nice guy and then he breaks down through Matt correct me if I'm wrong but like insecurity worry but also mm. this this overwhelming sensation of love comes upon him and kind of going I'm gonna be a dad and how does that alter the relationship? And then they sort of walk off giggling, cuddling, and really excited together that hopefully, in my eyes as well, that you almost want the audience to forget that he's just been yelling at her and he's, you know, thrown a cup of coffee across the stage. And that, because I think we as people in anything, we are very quick to remember the last thing we see um, and I think that that plays out amongst a lot of abusive relationships, that when something is bad, immediately there'll be something good and we go, oh, that, that's how it, that, that's really what it is. That's really our relationship. Um, and I, I felt quite passionately about not shying away from those tough topics because, you know, Me Too is a very real thing but how many people don't have the ability to speak up that me too you know it's of course it's a really important movement but only a select few people are now after years and years feeling comfortable enough to speak about it there are still thousands of people still in relationship can't speak up some because they don't want to and some because they don't have the support system behind them to do so. Um, and yeah, to, to shy away from that is, for me, it would have been disrespectful. Mm. Amazingly answered. And, okay, <laughs> everything there brilliantly. But like, why do you think then all these years that Carousel, I know it's the amazing music and everything and the stories you said, but why do you think it remains ever popular? I think 
just like we said, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the the themes in the, the story themes, are timeless. Yeah, yeah. The themes that are explored are completely timeless. Um, and just because the way something is written is classic in its form doesn't mean that it has to be alienating to a modern audience. Mm. Um, musically, especially for me, I mean, I'm, I love Carousel. And I think that you can tell a modern story while still being true to the musical style. Um, because, and I say this to a lot of students, I was, the music of Carousel was pop music at its time. Mm. And I think that it's no different to, you watch Dear Evan Hansen and you go, oh, you can hear one of those songs on the radio. I'm sure something like If I Loved You was definitely played on the radio and, you know, people like Ella Fitzgerald would have covered it at the time. And I think that if you stay true to the music and the style, you, like there's so much beauty to be found there that it can bring modern audience to look on it and go, oh, we actually wouldn't have things like Dear Evan Hansen. Or, we wouldn't have shows like Hamilton without shows like Carousel. Mm. We just fundamentally wouldn't um and i you know i i like being able to honor the legacy of essentially the birth of the genre that we love to do nerd <laughs> yeah you know, if you look at that if you look at that bench scene at the beginning where if i loved you occurs like that, that uh, writing music and uh, music and lyrics and interlacing scene like that wasn't wasn't a thing pre-carousel you know even in Oklahoma and and works like that they as much as they did um as much as they did do the it was a, a book musical in a sense um they didn't intertwine the two in a way that they do in carousel the first and that benching is revolutionary yeah so it's amazing to to be able to sort of, and that, and that work is timeless. You know, that is a, a theme that has continued into modern musical theatre, whether that be yeah. Hamilton, Durham, Hanson, et cetera, et cetera. That interlacing of scene and, and song is is still present. Yeah. And that's what's so amazing is that like, this, this was from the 40s, you know, incredible. Um, and and those those um, tricks and, and those- The show uh, is 80 years old. Yeah, those pieces. The show is 80 years old time. But, and it's but, perfect. But yeah, it could, could easily be, um, written today, you know, and it's 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 just a per it's yes, yeah, it's, it's a perfect example of of, of musical theatre, really, and it's it's just such a pleasure to do it every night, really. Sometimes four times in a weekend, <laughs> <laughs> all the time. Um, do you ha guys have a favourite number within the show? It's probably a more difficult question. Mm. I, for me to do, I. I get a bit giddy every time we do the bench scene because it's so iconic. It's 12 minutes of genius. And aside from that, I genuinely believe soliloquy is the best minutes musical theatre <laughs> ever written. Um, and it's a good thing that he does it justice. Um, Hopefully. He's very good. <laughs> um, he won't get that compliment from me again. No, 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 no. <laughs> but... Um, the the storytelling within that piece the way that it musically reflects you could listen to soliloquy as an instrumental piece and still understand the story mm. which i think for me with carousel is also what is exceptional that the music tells you enough emotionally that when you add words on top of that it's for me, it's why it's one of the greatest pieces of all time, because you can't not listen to it and feel something, whatever your feelings are. I, I genuinely believe it's impossible not to come away going, mm. what an incredible piece of music, whether you like musicals or not, you can't, it's undeniable. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, for me, for me, I, you know, there's, there's, there's so many moments in there, but, um, Obviously, I spend quite a lot of time being quite dark. So the lighter moments in the show for me, I, I love listening to and 
and Tom and Julie who, oh, who play Carrie and uh, Enoch are just so great. Um, when the and, children are asleep is gorgeous. Yeah, and for, actually for me, I, I musically, I think the Mr. Snow into the Mr. Snow reprise is oh, some yeah. of my favorite because um, that is such a moment of joy in this piece and they become few and far between as the story goes on. So actually to make real use of them and with, by such skillful performers as Julie and Tom are like, to, to listen to them, you know, p perform those those moments really is such a joyful moment in the in the mm. production. Before I bring it all down a tone or seven. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. All my interviews I do, I wrap up with some. I call them quick fire questions, but it's up to you how you answer them. The first one being, what was okay. the first piece of theatre you can remember seeing in your lifetime? Oh. Carousel at Harrowlight Opera Company in Rittensworth at Watersmeet Theatre. Mm -hmm. um, uh, at Newbury Corn Exchange, Aladdin, a pantomime. <laughs> <laughs> Strong. And do you have a favourite piece of theatre that you've seen in your life so far? I will say one of my favourite things I've seen. Oh my God, I have so, okay, I have two, There's I have two. So many. Oh. Um, I saw the original production of The Colour Purple on Broadway in 2006 with Fantasia Barino, who's going to play in the film. And it lives in my head, Ren. And the other one being Parade at the Donmar Warehouse with Bertie Carvel and Lara Pulver. Also, that was in 2007, lives in my mind, Rent Free, two of the most incredible pieces of theatre I've ever seen. Uh, I, I'm really struggling. Um, for the best, the, my favourite piece of theatre I've ever seen, um, I saw, uh, recently actually, I saw Operation Mincemeat um, at Southwark Playhouse, um, and it's an absolute work of perfection. Oh, wow, in the one going to Riverside theater. Studios? Absolutely phenomenal. I'm going again, Riverside oh, Studios. Um, it was, it's, uh, the work that the guys have done to create this brand new piece of musical theatre is phenomenal, and it really is true form um 2022 musical theater um it's uh genre defying it's it's world class so that honestly i came out of that thinking i can't wait to go again amazing it's sensational um and what else have I, we'll go with that for now and i'll think <laughs> of 17 more this afternoon yeah. strong both both answers and what was i know you probably don't get much time but what was the last tv series you both binged oh you oh, here we go Surely binged. we can talk about This Is Us. Well, I don't know if I've binged This okay. Is Us, but I think This Is Us is truly the greatest TV show I've ever written. It's amazing. Can't talk about it without crime. Yeah. Next. I, uh, <laughs> I actually, at the start of this project, went back more for, more for research than anything, but it, I do believe that it is one of the greatest TV series I've made. And I watched Band of Brothers straight into the Pacific. Um, the... Stephen Spielberg, Tom Hanks, um, works of art. Um, and I, I binged them all in the first week of rehearsals um, while these guys were all, all dancing their socks off. I watched that <laughs> uh, for hours on end. Um, and that is, I think, that was the last thing I properly binged. I, once I'd started, I thought, I have to, I have yeah. to finish. And it's probably the third time I've watched it. So oh, Okay. Mm. I'm on Stranger Things season four at the moment. Mm, very good. I need to start season four, but the episodes are too long, so I'm slightly frightened by it. Yeah, they, <laughs> they are, are very long. long. Yeah. I'll get around to it. What w would be one thing, it doesn't have to be career-based, it can be literally anything on your bucket lists? Oh, actually, this is a good one. Um, because I watched Emma's v version of this the other day. <laughs> um, I, would, I really desperately want to do a skydive. <laughs> um, and oh. Emma showed me the video of her skydive. Yeah. Um, and as sick as she looked, yeah. it didn't, <laughs> didn't, actually, didn't actually put me off. So that is number one on my bucket list is to do a skydive. That's cool. Mm. Oh, bucket list. I would be totally lying if I said it wasn't to like originate a leading role on Broadway. <laughs> and that is so boring of me to say that it's a work thing. That's made mine seem so basic. I wanted to skydive. You want to originate no, not, a role I, I don't really want to originate. But I think if I maybe if I place my bucket list, I haven't been to Australia yet. Okay. So I would really, really like Neither to go I, to Australia. Neither have I, actually. That's not my list. 
And if you weren't in theatre... <laughs> right. If you guys weren't in the theatre, what would you be doing with your lives, do you think? Nothing. I am I am that person who I'm so maybe boring, but I've known what I wanted to do since I was three years old. Um it's like the G and speech therapy. Because mm. I think it plays a lot into what we do anyway. That I love understanding why people are the way that they are. Um so if I could if I if I had, you know, a pot of money to go and do another degree, I would love to do developmental psychology or like childcare psychology, just to understand how our brains form be the way that we are adults. You've got such intelligent answers this <laughs> evening. Um, <laughs> this is this is when this I, is this is why my parents wouldn't let me join the circus earlier. Yeah. They were like, get your A levels. Oh, yeah. Such a good answer, I can't. I, um I would probably work um either race I, car driver uh, no i would love to be a race car driver don't, <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong i'm big into cars um but uh i would i would I, i'd probably be a teacher i think teaching is a big part of my life i do it a lot i did it for two years over lockdown um i still sort of teach at a couple of schools when i'm working in london living in london um and i love it and i think it's great and i think i'm so passionate about theatre as a genre um, and as a work of art and I think that the continuation of it into the next generation is only going to be through passionate people who mm. who love it and I, I really lucky at school such a passionate um, drama teacher um, that you know I'll always be thankful for um, and so therefore for me you know to hopefully inspire the next sort of group of people coming into the business is really important so that's probably what I would do. Amazing. This one is a deep question that you've kind of already both touched on. But simply, what does theatre mean to you? Everything. How long have you got? Because, <laughs> because once you get her started, she doesn't stop. Um, the, simple, the simple answer it, for me is... Um, the simple answer genuinely for me is escapism. Um, I think that the... Without getting too deep. The world can be a pretty terrifying place at times and for two hours a day where you can live in someone else's world or watch someone else's world. I love being an audience member as much as I love being on stage um, and actually especially musical theatre for the reason I spoke so much about the music in Carousel. When music makes you feel something and takes you on a journey, you know, there, there's a reason why music provides so much catharsis and whatever kind of music you like to listen to. Um, and I will add one last thing as well with music that a lot of the times, if you look at people with mental health problems or problems of the mind, whether that's Alzheimer's, you sing an old song to them and they always know the words and lyrics. And it's mm. something that can always bring people back together. Um, so I think the escapism of music um, is like no other art form. I'm impressed with you, genuinely. You've got such good answers. Have you done this before? I think for me, it's uh, it. I love the the feeling of being at home and the the, the theatre family. It really is like community. yeah, community, one hundred percent, and it's. Um, you know, we none of us were part of it really for as much as you know it is now for over two years. And um, I did a small project before this, but actually, you know, this is my first job back in after COVID and after the the breakdown of the business. So, and it's I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it, you know, coming back in. And actually, it's just been this like it's almost felt like homecoming it's just been amazing and like to work with this incredible company of people who are um so kind and generous and passionate um and compassionate mm. um is is just such a joy every day and that's what that's what's been so um special about it is you you feel like you're coming back to this group of like-minded people who are all working towards the same goal and we're working towards the same goal every night um sometimes nine times a week <laughs> um and that's special and, and i think you you formed with people in theatre unlike any other 
Um, and that, that to me is, is, is something that is so unique and so special. Um, because when you're working on, on telly or, or on film, you know, you only have to get it one right once, but when you're, when you're doing it, you know, in theater, you have to get it right eight, nine, sometimes 10 times a week. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's, that's a special skill for special people. And it, it really does feel like, like coming home again, which is so nice. Amazing. Well, that wraps everything up beautifully so thank you for your time if anyone wants to come see carousel it's on at kill of house uh, until sunday the 3rd of july and everyone should go because as i said it's phenomenal i've written two i think i wrote two reviews or i, I changed it either way i gave it five stars both times and they're so kind, they are so kind. Thank, thank you so, so much, much.